This week we're going to start our poetry unit, and with this first poetry lesson, we're going to take a look at sound devices in poetry. So let's go ahead and get started. Sound devices create musical effects that appeal to the ear. So the use by the poet of these sound devices is what gives poetry that musical quality to it. It also uh, when the poet uses these sound devices, it also helps to create kind of the tone and the mood of the poem. It really helps add to it. So it's important that we can recognize and identify these and also take a look at how each poet uses sound devices to add to the overall meaning and tone of the poem. First one we're going to look at is alliteration, which is my absolute favorite of the sound devices. And alliteration is the repetition of initial consonant sounds, so beginning consonant sounds. For example, dangerous dogs dig ditches in Denver. Notice the repeated d sound at the beginning of a lot of these words. Dangerous dogs dig ditches and Denver all begin with the initial consonant D sound. So this is a perfect example of alliteration. Our second sound device is consonants. And we need to be careful with consonants because a lot of people confuse alliteration and consonants. Consonants is the repeating of consonant sounds within close proximity of each other, within a sentence or a phrase. So like alliteration, it is the repetition of sounds. Alliteration, though, can be vowel sounds or consonant sounds. Consonants is only consonant sounds. Really easy to remember that based on the name. And these sounds are going to come at the, be at the middle, excuse me, and the end of words. Alliteration is at the beginning. Consonants is middle and end. So that's really one of the key uh, ways to tell the difference. So let's take a look at an example. The lint was sent with the tent. Notice the repeated nt, that nt sound at the end of those words. This is an example of consonants. Our next sound device is assonance. Assonance is the repetition of vowel sounds in nearby words. So consonants were for consonant sounds, assonance for vowel sounds. Easy way to remember this is it begins with the vowel A, so assonance is for vowels. Again, don't confuse this with alliteration. Alliteration is at the beginning. These vowel sounds are going to be in the middle or even at the end. So for example, the light of the fire is a sight. Notice the repeated long I sound. Light, fire, sight. This is an example of assonance. I guess as you've heard of this one before, onomatopoeia, just a fun word to say. And these are words that imitate sounds. Words like buzz, honk, hiss, vroom. Okay, so buzz, of course, imitates the B sound. Honk uh, imitates the sound of the horn. Hiss imitates maybe the sound of a snake or steam. And vroom, of course, imitates the sound that a car might make. Onomatopoeia. Okay. Just in case you missed it. Buzz, honk, hiss, and vroom. All examples. Next we have rhyme. Rhyme is the repetition of sounds at ends of words. And you've probably been doing rhyming words since you were in early elementary school, so this shouldn't be new to you at all. So words like spring, not spring, should be spring, and fling, cat and hat, bunch and crunch are all examples of rhyme. They all have sounds at the end of words that are repeated. The ings in the first set, the ats in the second set, and the unches in the third set. Now we have different rhyme types. Our first type of rhyme is internal rhyme. 
internal rhyme occurs within a single line. So for instance, the rain in Spain stays mainly in the plain. Rain, Spain, plain, all rhyme, but they're all within that same sentence. They're all within the same line. So this is called internal rhyme. It's inside one line. We also, as soon as it comes up, have external rhyme. This is also known as end rhyme. This occurs at the end of two or more lines. So for instance, tiger, tiger, burning bright in the forests of the night. Bright and night both rhyme and they fall at the end of lines. So this is external rhyme or end rhyme. You may hear it called either one, so I want you to know both terms for this. Rhyme scheme. Rhyme scheme is the pattern of end rhyme in a poem. And when we do rhyme scheme, we, dis we assign each rhyme a letter. Okay, so let's take a look at what this looks like. From Dr. Seuss. Rhyme scheme, we're just looking at the last word of the line. So last word of the first line is ham. That is always going to get an A for the first line. Last word of the second line is am. Well, am rhymes with ham, so it gets the same letter, A. Next line ends with the word boat. Well, boat doesn't rhyme with ham or am, so it needs a new letter, and we give it the next letter. We give it a B. Move on to the next line, last word, goat. Let's look above goat, see what word it rhymes with, if any. Well, goat rhymes with boat. And we gave boat line a B, so we're going to give that line a B too. Let's move on to the next last word of the line, house. Look above it to see if anything else rhymes with house that we've already had. Well, house doesn't rhyme with goat or boat, am or ham, so we have to give it the next letter, C. And then we look at mouse. Well, mouse rhymes with house, and house was a letter C, so now we're going to give mouse the letter C. And we just keep going through the poem in that way, looking above it to see if it rhymes with anything above it. If it does, give it a matching letter. If it doesn't, give it the next letter of the alphabet. Pretty straightforward. And our last sound device that we're going to look at today is meter. Meter is a poem's rhythm. It's the strong and the weak stresses of words. So words have stressed and unstressed syllables. Poets use that information to create meter, to create this rhythm. They also can include pauses and to help build that rhythm as well. So for instance, this line from Shakespeare, shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Okay. This has a distinct rhythm to it. We have, shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Okay. Da, 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 da. Okay. When you read poems, you want to listen to see if there is a rhythm, a meter to it. Not all poems will have meter. Not all poems will have rhyme. Not all poems will have any of these sound devices. But it's important as you're reading a poem to be on the lookout for them and then to see why the poet is using the sound device that he or she is using. Do they want to draw your attention to something? Do they want to set a mood? Do they want to set a tone? Why are they doing what they're doing? Really, at the end of the day, that's what poetry comes down to. Because poems are so short oftentimes, not always, but oftentimes, each word is chosen very carefully. So if the word is in the poem, it's there for a very specific reason. And it's our jobs as readers of the poem to figure out what that reason is. So we're going to get started. I want you this week as you're reading these poems and in the future weeks of the Poetry Unit, as you're reading, pay attention. Look for these sound devices that we've gone over and see if you can find them and see if you can decide why the poet's using them. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know.